This is the city of Hefei, the capital of Anhui province and the largest city in eastern China. In 2017, the Chinese began building a secret program in that city that no one knew anything about. This program remained shrouded in secrecy for three years, until late October 2020, when the Chinese announced the 14th five-year plan for the state during the meeting of the 19th Central Committee of the ruling Communist Party. This five-year plan is a set of primary economic goals, including essential and dangerous ones related to research and development, which is the main arena of conflict between China and the U.S. The Chinese identified seven main areas in science and technology as a top priority. The first area was based on the secret program they had been working on at that time, China's National Quantum Program, which shocked Americans and Europeans with the Chinese progress in quantum technology. During this period, Chinese President Xi Jinping met with some of China's leading quantum physicists and told them explicitly that the program was part of the national strategy. That research in the quantum field would be like an advance-handed piece on a go board. After the revelation of the highly advanced Chinese program, a raging war began between the shocked Americans and the Chinese in quantum research. So what is this quantum technology? How did China surpass America in it for the first time? And why are US officials terrified by the sudden Chinese technical breakthroughs to the point they declared a national emergency? Let's find out together. I'm Ashraf Ibrahim, and this is the Mad Economics Channel. Quantum technology is a complex field of physics that explores the behavior of particles smaller than atoms by exploiting the principles of quantum mechanics, such as superposition and entanglement, to develop powerful tools and devices with unique capabilities. There's three main areas or applications of quantum technology quantum computing, quantum sensing, and quantum internet. Now, we'll look at quantum computing, for example. But first, let me ask you this. What shapes the digital landscape all over the world currently? Yes, strictly the classic computers we rely on. From smartphones, laptops, desktops, and virtual reality headsets to the giant corporate devices currently leading the artificial intelligence revolution. These devices are called classical computers. These traditional devices perform mathematical operations one by one and the basic unit of information is the bit. As we all know, they represent one of two binary values, either zero or one. Quantum computing is based on a different basic memory unit, the qubit. Qubits are made up of atoms and subatomic particles that have the flexibility to represent zero, one, or both, so they can handle many calculations at the same time. The fantastic motion properties of qubits make these devices extraordinary. For example, if you brought the best computer in the world with the highest capabilities and gave it a complex task, such as decrypting a very complex code, it could take thousands of years to solve. What time would the quantum computer solve this task or break this encryption? Guess, how long would it take? In a split second something literally beyond imagination. Now, if we want to follow the Chinese quantum advancement, we'll need to keep an eye on this man. This is Pan Jianwei, called in China the father of quantum, the mastermind of China's efforts to achieve global leadership in quantum technology, and the founder of China's quantum satellite program. This man, after the Chinese president met with top Chinese quantum physicists in 2020, published a critical article in the official newspaper of the Chinese Ministry of Science and Technology, Science and Technology Daily, in which he said that China was trying to develop three destructive applications of quantum technology. Quantum computing, that one we explained a little bit ago, and quantum sensing, which is a technology that can detect or measure physical disturbances with unprecedented sensitivity and accuracy. Applications include airborne quantum sensors that can detect a submarine hiding hundreds of meters deep at the bottom of the ocean, or guidance devices that can operate independently for several months without a GPS signal. The third application is the quantum internet, which leads to highly secure communications. Entangled particles transmit messages, thus preventing eavesdropping. Any attempt to hack messages will cause changes in the particles, which will alert users. 
In general, quantum research will help achieve critical scientific breakthroughs and will revolutionize almost all industries, from aviation and cars to finance, clean energy production, and medicines. Of course, we're all following the artificial intelligence revolution that's happening right now, which our minds can barely comprehend and coexist with. Generative artificial intelligence, like ChatGPT and other generative systems, are developing dramatically, daily. Its unique developments based primarily on powerful computer processing ability. The more this ability increases, the more these systems develop and advance. This particular revolution depends on classical computers. Can you imagine if we installed these artificial intelligence systems on quantum computers? What would happen? If we want to make the picture more transparent, we can say that the current artificial intelligence revolution is a car or a vehicle working on a 4000cc motor, like BMW car engines, a powerful motor that pushes artificial intelligence to its maximum limits. Imagine with me when we come to remove this 4000cc motor and put another motor in its place. 1 million cc, for example. I want you to imagine it. It's like rocket fuel that will create a comprehensive transformation in artificial intelligence systems, something we can call technological doomsday. Someone might ask, why aren't classical computers converted into quantum computers and used commercially? Currently, quantum computers operate in a very complex environment. This environment must be protected, work for short periods and on particular tasks, and make many mistakes. Scientists still face significant challenges in obtaining qubits to achieve superposition and entanglement for a sufficient period to complete any task. Until now, quantum superposition and entanglement states are very fragile, and without a specific temperature and appropriate environmental conditions, they quickly lose their properties and behave chaotically and intermittently. For these qubits to work correctly, they must be stored in special refrigerators at very low temperatures, near the point where the atoms stop moving. That's why studying quantum computing requires vast material and human resources. Here, the competition and conflict between China, on the one hand, and the United States and other Western countries, on the other hand, is evident. Last, on February 15th, the CSIS issued a critical and shocking paper regarding the raging conflict between China and the US in quantum technology. The paper says that the U.S. may need to catch up to China regarding quantum technology. This means that although the U.S. has recently begun to impose a blockade on China and prevent quantum technology inputs from reaching it, as it did before in semiconductors, the situation here is a little different, because China's already reached an advanced position in the competition and surpasses America in some quantum technology applications. It sponsors those research more than the Americans. These are the nine most prominent countries in the world, in addition to the European Union, that have announced cumulative sponsorship for quantum research. What is the largest sponsor of them all? China. They announced $15.3 billion in funding for quantum research, more than twice what the European Union governments pledged and eight times what America pledged. According to McKinsey, this massive Chinese spending has stimulated the development of dozens of Chinese research institutes specializing in quantum technologies, in addition to establishing the country's first doctoral program in quantum technologies, thus creating a culture that's fostered rapid progress in this field in China. Within a few years, they were reaping results. More than half of the patents in quantum technologies worldwide are owned by China. We're talking about more than 53%, or 53.8% to be precise, of global patents, compared to 11.2% for the European Union and only 10% for America. On January 29th, a document was released by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, the Ministry of Science and Technology, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences, along with other Chinese administrations, which called on the entire Chinese nation to concentrate resources on achieving technological breakthroughs in specific areas, such as quantum computing, GPUs, robots, brain-computer interfaces, and other advanced technologies to strive for control over future industries, 
as the document states, these new guidelines set goals to achieve breakthroughs in no less than 100 advanced core technologies by 2025 and for China to become a global leader in specific fields by 2027. In early January, the Chinese shocked the world with a breakthrough in quantum computing. As announced by the Chinese company Origin Quantum Computing Technology, based in the city of Hefei, the third generation of the ultraconductive quantum computer, Origin Wukong, was revealed. The company delivered the first and second generations of ultraconductive quantum computers to the Chinese market in 2020 and 2021, respectively. This third generation of powerful devices has an efficiency that's increased by tens of times compared to the previous generations. With this, China joins the ranks of countries like the United States and Canada that can provide a complete quantum computing system. But before we continue, let's pause for a moment at the Chinese company Origin Quantum, which stands behind this remarkable achievement. Do you guys know that this company competes with giants like IBM and Google? They're the ones producing superconducting quantum computers, and although they have more qubits, they've been working on quantum computing development since the 1990s. The Chinese company Origin Quantum was founded in 2017 by Guo Guoping and Guo Guangzhan, quantum physicists at the University of Science and Technology of China, or USTC. Despite being relatively young, the company was behind the first production line of quantum chips the first quantum computer operating system, and the first measurement and control system for quantum computing in China, not to mention the many patents owned by this budding company. Origin Quantum ranks first in quantum computing patents in China and sixth globally. After announcing the third generation of the Origin Wukong quantum computer last January, the Chinese made an unexpected move. They made this quantum computer available for free use by anyone worldwide. Within just 10 days, 350,000 visitors from 61 countries could use this high-speed computer, with users from the United States leading the list. The device completed about 34,000 quantum computing tasks during this period. Of course, it's worth mentioning that American quantum computers are not open to China. In fact, the Chinese are flexing their muscles worldwide, including America. And that's not all. They say this is just the beginning. In November last year, the Chinese government-owned newspaper Science and Technology Daily reported that SpinQ, a company specializing in quantum computing, delivered the first superconducting quantum chip named QPU, developed locally for a scientific research institute in the Middle East. SpinQ, one of the fastest-growing Chinese companies in quantum computing, was founded in 2018 in Shenzhen in southeastern China. It established a research and development center for superconducting quantum computers and a production line for superconducting quantum chips. The remarkable thing is that this company exports quantum computing products to countries on five continents, including the United States and its allies, such as Canada, Australia, Britain, Germany, Switzerland, Norway, Japan, Brazil, and many other countries. This demonstrates China's increasing influence in the global quantum computing industry. The Chinese have not stopped yet. This time, the blow came from the godfather of quantum technology in China, Pan John Wei, who led a research team and achieved a record breakthrough in quantum computing, according to a research paper published last October in the journal Physical Review Letters. Subject to peer review, the breakthrough was simply the development of the latest quantum computer, called Zhoujiang-3, which used photons, which are tiny particles that travel at the speed of light, as a physical medium for calculations. The Zhoujiang machine, named after an old mathematics textbook, solved a very complex mathematical problem within a millionth of a second. Do you guys know how long the fastest classical supercomputer in the world would take to solve this problem? The Frontier Supercomputer developed by the United States and chosen in mid-2022 as the most powerful computer in the world, will take 20 billion years to complete the task that the Chinese quantum computer Zhoujiang-3 solved in a millionth of a second. It's incredible and mind-blowing, isn't it? Of course, amidst the sudden Chinese incursions, the Americans stand amazed, like a person hit on the head. 
As mentioned in a report discussing the quantum technology race between China and America in the Diplomat newspaper, in this quantum race, the one who comes second will be the first to lose. Why? Simply, the first country to possess quantum technologies will have a set of tools that will allow it to outmaneuver unprepared opponents. This country will be able to break current encryption, build unbreakable encrypted communication networks, and develop more precise sensor devices. The first country in the field of quantum will be able to threaten the information infrastructure of companies, armies, and other governments faster than their ability to defend themselves. Not to mention its control over a market with a global market value that will reach trillions of dollars by 2035. That's why Americans are shocked and trying to understand what China is achieving despite the strict restrictions they impose to stop their advance in this field. The latest package of restrictions was in August last year, when US President Joe Biden declared a national emergency due to the Chinese threat. Biden announced that this step is a national emergency to deal with the threat of advancement by countries of concern in technologies and sensitive products of the military, intelligence, surveillance, or cyber capabilities of these countries. Of course, no other country was mentioned in this emergency announcement except China, in addition to its two administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. The new restrictions imposed by Biden aim to restrict American investments in Chinese companies in three areas – quantum technologies, semiconductors, and microelectronics, and some artificial intelligence systems. After declaring a national emergency in the United States, in October of last year, a committee of the U.S. Congress specializing in China began investigations with the venture capital firm Sequoia Capital regarding its investments in Chinese quantum computing companies artificial intelligence companies, and Chinese semiconductor companies. Also, with other venture capital firms such as GGV Capital, GSR Ventures, Walden International, and Qualcomm Ventures. The American pressure on China in the field of quantum technologies was not the only one. In 2021, three Chinese organizations in quantum computing were listed on the Entities List, issued by the U.S. Department of Commerce thus prohibiting any American company from selling their products without a license. At the time, the U.S. Department of Commerce said that the three Chinese entities in quantum computing supported the Chinese Army's military modernization, developing applications for anti-stealth and anti-submarine warfare and the ability to break encryption. Since 2019, the U.S. Department of Commerce has been consulting with companies from allied countries to prevent the sale of vital components for quantum computing to Chinese entities. These include cryogenic refrigerators that create very low temperatures to control and manipulate qubits. There are three companies that are the largest in the manufacturing of these refrigerators used in quantum technology. Uferzoi in Finland, Oxford Instruments Nanoscience in Britain, and Janus ULT in the United States. These three companies controlled about 70% of the global market for cryogenic refrigerators in 2021. Naturally, they were restricting Chinese access to their devices. The U.S. administration was considering imposing a comprehensive ban on the sale of these refrigerators to the Chinese, but the Chinese response was faster. On February 28th, Chinese newspapers announced that the country had started mass production of a refrigerator called the EZQ a cryogenic refrigerator designed explicitly for superconducting quantum computer chips. They've already started delivering it to customers in the second quarter of 2023. In this way, China will end its reliance on international manufacturers, mainly from Finland, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Ultimately, do you think China will surpass the United States in quantum technology? I'll follow all your answers in the comments, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Bye.